Welcome to Mass at Holy Trinity. Glad to see you here. Because we are wearing masks and there are fewer of us here, please say your parts boldly. So let's stand as we begin our celebration with the entrance song. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, fellow. He's of praise and thanks to God. Ring out your Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Power. Power he has wielded, honor is his garment, risen from the stairs of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come then, our all nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, fellow. He's of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Good evening, and welcome on a sunny Saturday night. Welcome to our online viewers as well. And let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. And my friends, as we continue to make our way through our uh, crazy times, let's um, pause and uh, Look into our own hearts and into our own lives for those places that need God's light and his uh, courage and his comfort, his healing, whatever it might be, and hold them up to him in this Mass tonight. Lord Jesus, you are God's mighty word, the source of all that is. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are master of our lives and master of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are forgiveness for our sins and healing for our brokenness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your Glory to God, glory to God. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book, first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in hearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is overall God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. A 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came walking toward them on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down, those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good evening, everybody. Good to see you all. Good to see all you out there in internet land as well. Tonight I'm going to start with a little quote that Father Dave gave me some time ago. Every once in a while he's good for something around here. Uh, <clears throat> here's the quote. Nothing worthy of God can be done without earth being set in uproar and hell's legions roused. How's that for a quote? Nothing worthy of God can be done without earth being set in uproar and hell's legions roused. Those are the words of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And this week, as I've been preparing with the readings, <clears throat> I've been wondering, what if those words could be a lens for our times, for our situations? Nothing worthy of God can be done without earth being set in uproar and hell's legions roused. So what if all of the turmoil and the turbulence and the storm winds, if you will, that are whipping about us right now, what if those are a sign that God is about to move, my friends, to do something, that he is doing something, and that hell is panicking. Wouldn't that be a different way of looking at current events? COVID and social upheaval and the struggle confronting us. What if God were moving in this storm as surely as he moved through the storm on the Sea of Galilee in our gospel? What if his spirit is pressing in on us, pushing ahead of it those energies and forces, personal and social, not yet subject to Jesus' reign? Like the tiny whisper to Elijah, preceded by the wind and the fire and the earthquake. Can we hope for that? Should we? Should we be looking for God in this mess? Expecting him even? And if we spot him, are we ready? Are we ready to dare the waves in order to go to him? Can we set aside whatever it is that we're clinging to, our lifestyle or our security or our comfortable routines or even our judgment or our anger? Can we set those aside, whatever they are, in order to pay attention to him? The medieval mystic Meister Eckhart said that oftentimes, grace doesn't just waft into our lives like a gentle breeze. 
Instead, he said, it breaks in like a bomb. So this world and our lives and the powers that be, they're so set in their ways like concrete that often when God starts to push in, the result is boom, something breaks, it shatters. We're thrown off balance. Our world reels. And I don't know about you, but I don't like it when my world reels. I don't like it when my comfortable routines are shattered. And the world doesn't like it either and the forces of hell like it maybe least of all. And so they resist. They resist in attempt to reassert control, and we resist, and the result is often just what we see right now, chaos and confusion. Let me give you a personal example. <clears throat> Years ago, I found myself struggling with anxiety. I know some of you have done this as well. Now this wasn't a usual thing for me, but it went on for months. Part of it was due to some unresolved grief. Part of it was due to some work that I had taken on for which I wasn't quite ready at the time. Part of it just had to do with my own personality. Anyway, those five or six months, you guys, it was really, truly awful. I wasn't sleeping. I think I was averaging about an hour of sleep a night. I was perpetually restless. I could hardly sit still at times. I wasn't eating. I lost a lot of weight. I really looked good, though. I can say that. But you know, it was my response to all of this that I later found instructive because when I was beset by fear and anxiety, I began to analyze over and over what was going on, what I was feeling, why I was feeling. I'd play it over and over and over again in my mind. I tried reasoning my way out of it. I came up with solution after solution and none of them worked. And even when I turned to prayer, even when I'd pray, I'd give my anxiety to God but then I'd take it right back and start picking at it again. So prayer became this kind of monologue. God must have been so bored. I spent all of my prayer time telling God all that was wrong and then getting angry with him when he wouldn't just take it away. Ugh, oh, I was overwhelmed, exhausted. Well, the breakthrough came when finally somebody, and they must have been sent by God, when somebody suggested that maybe I should stop looking so much at myself and start looking instead for God. Stop looking at yourself, Brett, and start looking for God. Well, you guys, that was like an epiphany for me. And you know, when I did that, when I stepped away from myself and started trying to step towards God, well, it made all the difference in the world. I'm not saying it wasn't easy. It took effort to do that, real discipline, mentally and spiritually. It meant that, for example, in prayer, I had to stop focusing on me, on what I was feeling, on my endless rationalizing. I had to consciously grab hold of my attention and say, enough, no more looking here at all of this. Start looking out there for God in your loved ones, in your work, in the scriptures, in the world around you. Stop trying to control all this. Yes, it's awful, fine. So it's awful. God's bigger than your awfulness. He's bigger than your anxiety and your exhaustion and all of your fears. So pay attention then to God. And you know, when I did that, things began to fall into perspective. So whether I was feeling anxious or at peace, there was God. Whether I failed or succeeded, there was God. And even whether I lived or I died, I knew there was God. And when my attention began to turn towards God instead of myself, I found I could listen better. I could trust more. I could acknowledge my fear and then set it aside and act. And lo and behold, God at that point began to make some sorely needed changes in my life. And in re retrospect, I saw that maybe all of this inner turmoil was to a large extent my own resistance to God's effort to enter into my life in a deeper way. Not that I still didn't try and push back once in a while. I mean, I, I did have my self-respect. I need you to know, right? So my friends, in all that's going on in the world around us right now, I don't know what God is doing. Not yet, but I know that we do have a choice. 
we can focus on the unrest and the turmoil and the turbulence and let it overwhelm us, drown us in fear and anxiety, or make us bitter and shrill and condemning and despairing. Or we can focus on God. We can look for him. Accept that what comes to us comes through the hands of our loving Father. Trust that he's approaching us, each one of us, in the storm that's raging. And so be ready to respond with courage, maybe, and generosity, and forgiveness. How about that one? And understanding, no matter what comes. You know, my mantra these past few months isn't original, but it sure has sustained me. It's been one day at a time. One day at a time. One day at a time based on the conviction that God is bigger than all of this and far more able to deal with it than I am. So I only need to pay attention to today, to God and to where he's present in my life today, to what and to whom he's putting in my life today, and to keep going forward soberly and thoughtfully, but also hopefully today. My friends, if you're finding yourself lost and adrift at sea these days, fearing the storm, I would invite you to do, to do the same. Stop watching the wind and the waves. Start looking for God. And when he reveals himself, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Go where he calls you. Don't be afraid. After all, we have it on good authority. Nothing worthy of God can be done without earth being set in uproar and hell's legions roused. And let us bring our prayers now to God. For all of those feeling anxious, fearful, or lost at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, our bishops, and our pastors, that they might help us see the movement of God in our world right now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our elected leaders, that they might set the good of our country above party politics in their decisions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the explosion in Beirut. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our students and teachers preparing to start the new school year, that they might remain safe and hopeful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our private intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And God our Father, receive the prayers we bring to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And pray now that your offerings and mine will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. So with angels and archangels and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we join together in the hymn of glory. God, our Father, we praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. And now, celebrating the reconciliation he has brought us, we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you've bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and your entire people. Just as you've gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Joseph and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray together in the way Jesus prayed with his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us peace and unity in accordance with your kingdom, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May God's peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. When the storms of life are raging, Lord, stand by me. 
When the current pulls me under, Lord, stand by me. When the rising waters toss me like a ship upon the sea, you who Please join me in our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Stand by me. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we've consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. One announcement, everybody. Uh, next Saturday is August 15th, would usually be the Feast of the Assumption. It is the Feast of the Assumption, as you know. Since it falls on Saturday, it is not a day of obligation. However, we have an option this year where we can celebrate the Feast of the Assumption at all of our weekend Masses. So that's what we're going to do this year. Next weekend, all of our weekend Masses, Saturday evening and then Sunday morning, will be for the Feast of the Assumption. So just be prepared for that as you come. Don't be surprised or think that we're out of our liturgical minds, although sometimes we are. That's what's going on. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, the Lord.